to go to your dream of uh, modeling a cell, uh, what are the big challenges that lay ahead for us to make that happen? We should maybe highlight that alpha fold. I mean, there's just so many leaps. Yeah. So alpha fold solved, if it's fair to say, protein folding, and there's so many incredible things we could talk about there, including the open sourcing, uh, the, everything you've released. Alpha fold three is doing protein RNA DNA interactions. Mm -hmm which is super complicated and fascinating that's uh, amenable to modeling. Alpha genome uh, predicts uh, how small genetic changes, like if we think about single mutations, how they link to actual uh, function. So um, those are, it seems like it's creeping along yes. to a sophisticated, to, to much more complicated uh, things like a cell, but a cell has a lot of really complicated components. Yeah. So what I've tried to do throughout my career is I have these really grand dreams and then I try to, as you've noticed, and then I try to break, but I try to break them down. It, any, you know, it's easy to have a kind of uh, a crazily ambitious dream, but the, the, the trick is how do you break it down into manageable, achievable uh, interim steps that are meaningful and useful in their own right? And so virtual cell, which is what I call the project of modeling a cell, uh, I've had this idea, you know, of wanting to do that for maybe more like 25 years. And uh, I used to talk with Paul Nurse, who is a bit of a mentor of mine in biology. He runs the, the you know, he founded the Crick Institute and, and won the Nobel Prize in, in 2001. Uh, it, it is, is, we've been talking about it since you know, t before the, you know, in the nineties. And, um, and I come, used to come back to every five years is like, what would you need to model of the full internals of a cell so that you could do experiments on the virtual cell and what those experiment, you know, in silico and those predictions would be useful for you to save you a lot of time in the wet lab, right? That would be the dream. Maybe you could hundred X speed up experiments by doing most of it in silico, the search in silico, and then you do the validation step in the wet lab. That would be, that's the, that's the dream. And so, uh, but maybe now, finally, uh, so I was trying to build these components, AlphaFold being one, that that would uh, allow you eventually to model the full interaction, a full simulation of a cell. And I'd probably start with a yeast cell. And partly that's what Paul Nurse studied because the yeast cell is like a full organism that's a single cell, right? So it's the kind of simplest single cell organism. And so it's not just a cell, it's a full organism. And um and yeast is very well understood. And so that would be a good candidate for uh, a, a, a kind of full simulated model. Now, AlphaFold is the is the solution to the kind of static picture of what does a what does a protein look, 3D structure protein look like, a static picture of it. But we know that biology, all the interesting things happen with the dynamics, the interactions. And that's what AlphaFold 3 is is the first step towards is modeling those interactions. So first of all, pairwise, you know, proteins with proteins, proteins with RNA and DNA. But then then um, the next step after that would be modeling maybe a whole pathway, maybe like the Tor pathway that's involved in cancer or something like this. And then eventually you might be able to model, you know, a whole cell. Also, there's another complexity here that stuff in a cell happens at different time scales. Is that tricky? It's like, there, you know, protein uh, folding is, you know, super fast. Yes. Um, I don't know all the biological mechanisms, yes. but some of them take a long time. Yeah, and so sure. is that that's a level. So the levels of interaction has a different temporal scale yeah. that you have to be able to model. So that would be hard. So you'd probably need several simulated systems that can interact at these different temporal dynamics, or at least uh, maybe it's like a hierarchical system. So um, you can jump up and down the the different temporal stages. So can you avoid? I mean, one of the challenges here is not avoid simulating, for example, the, the, the quantum mechanical aspects of any of this, right? You want to not over model, you can skip ahead to just model the really high level things that get you a really good estimate of what's yes. going to happen. So you you got to make a decision when you're modeling any natural system, what is the cutoff level yeah. of the granularity that you're going to model it to that uh, then captures the dynamics that you're interested in. So probably for a cell, I, I would hope that would be the protein level. Uh, and that one wouldn't have to go down to the atomic level. Um, so, you know, and of course, that's where AlphaVolt stock kicks in. So that would be kind of the basis. And then you'd build these um, uh, higher level simulations that um, take those as building blocks, and then you get the emergent behavior.